This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. Greetings. In this video, you're going to learn how to find the limit using a numerical approach. Let's get started. It turns out there are three different methods for finding limits. There are numerical approach, analytical approach, and a graphical approach. And uh, MathGuide has videos on the analytical and graphical approaches. We already have those. Let's talk about the numerical approach. So let's say you have a function like we have here. This function is a rational expression. And what I'd like to do is, I don't know, try it real easy, right? I'd like to try this by substituting in this 2 and to see what happens, right? So if you do that, you're going to get a 2 squared minus 4 over a 2 minus 2. So you can see you're going to get 4 minus 4, or 0, and 2 minus 2, 0, both zeros in the numerator and the denominator. So that expression is undefined. Now you may think, because this is undefined, you think that the limit does not exist. Okay, that's a very common expression to put the DNE, right? Does not exist. Well, it turns out, could be does not exist, but not necessarily so. And in this case, there actually is a limit to this. Uh, it turns out that we have to use a more sophisticated approach. And you could, of course, use the analytical. I don't want to use an analytical approach. So instead, okay, so the approach that I'd like to try for this problem is going to be this numerical approach. Well, the first thing you're going to do is say, well, I'm, since I'm approaching this value 2, I'm going to put this value 2 as a known x value, right? It is a known domain value in the function, and I want to focus in on that one. That's why it's at the center of the table. So what you're going to want to do now is determine which numbers are close to 2 on the right side and the left side of 2, and approach it slowly. Now, uh, in order to do this, I think it's beneficial if we look at a number line. And on our number line, you can see here's a 2, and then we've got some numbers around it, right? Three and four. We got over here, we got a one and a zero. And of course, we're trying to find numbers that are close to two, to the left and to the right of it. So what most people do is they go a tenth to the right. 2.1 would be to the right. And if I go a tenth in the other direction, I'd have a 1.9. Okay, but I want to get closer to this x value, right? I'm going to get closer to that value 2. So closer than 2.1 would be 2.01, right? This is 2 and a tenth. This is 2 and a hundredth, right? OK, and then of course I could see that I'm going to have 2 and a thousandth, right? And then you could see that I'm getting very close. I mean, I'm only a thousandth now away from Okay, and that's the strategy that I'm going to use on the right side. You'll see it as I'm moving towards 2, I'm getting closer and closer to that 2 value on the right side. I'm going to do the same thing here on the right, uh, the left side. So here I've got a 1.9, so the next value would be 1.99, 1.999. Okay, now again, this is 1 and 9 tenths. This is 1 and 90, oops, 9 hundredths. And this is 1 in 999 thousandths. So we're slowly getting closer and closer, right? This is this means I'm only a thousandth away from 2. This is, I'm only a hundredth away. Okay, so I'm getting closer and closer. All right, so now that we have this set up, what I want to do is also figure out what are all the corresponding range values that go along with all of these domain values. So I'm going to get rid of all this distraction. So how do I find those? Well, there's many ways to do it. Many ways to find those values. And I'm going to show you how to use though uh, a, a graphing calculator to find those range values. All right, so I'm going to flip over to a TI Inspire. Now, you don't have to use a TI Inspire, but uh, it has a unique feature that I'd like you to see. All right, so you can see that I've taken the liberty of pulling up the graphing calculator. I have, have the graphing app. I even graph this function. The function is showing a line, but there's a little bit more to it. 
there's more than a line. Remember, x cannot be equal to 2. When x is 2, you get a 0 in the denominator. So uh, I know that there's going to be an open circle right here on the graph when x is 2. All right, anyway, nevertheless, how do you use the calculator to get the table? Well, first thing you want to do is pull up a table. Now, I, I could hit Control-T, or I can go Menu, Table, Split Screen. Okay, now what I want to do is put in different domain values, right? I don't like these domain values. So how do I change those domain values? Well, I go back to menu. I'm going to go to edit the table settings, right? So I'm going under table. I'm going to edit the table settings. And I don't care about anything on this menu except here where it says independent. I'm going to change this independent variable to ask. What that means is I want the calculator to ask me what the independent values are going to be. Now, normally the domain values are the independent values. Okay, that when we do these problems and, and we're graphing. So, x is the independent variable. I want it, the calculator, to ask me what these are. And you can see that in doing this, the calculator now has waiting for me to type in some numbers. Now, our first number was 1.9, then it was 1.99, 1.999. Then we also wanted 2, and we saw by doing a hand calculation that that gave us an undefined number. Okay, then on the other side, we had 2.001, 2.01, 2.1. And there you go. We've got these values. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in these values in the table that we were working on. So you can see that I've taken the liberty of writing in all those values and I put them in the table. All right, now this is a double-sided limit. What does that mean? It means that it's not indicating whether this is a plus or a minus, whether it's a left or right. So that means we have to look at this function from both sides. So you really have to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side. And I'm just going to put f of x. I'm going to call this the function f of x. And then you've got to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side, which is a little positive sign. So you've got to do this both ways. So what I'd like to do is look at this from the left side first. And so you're looking for a pattern. As you're moving to the right, right? I'm on the left side, but I'm moving towards the right, towards 2. There's a pattern that's happening here with the y values. I'm, I've got 3.9, 3.99, 3.999, and you can see that I'm getting closer and closer to the value 4. I mean, that's really close to 4. And if you look on the right side, I start over here with 4.1, and as I move to the left, closer and closer to 2, I got 4.1, 4.01, 4.001, and I'm getting closer and closer to the value 4 again. Now, if you remember with these double-sided limits, you do now have to compare these two values since these two values are indeed equal to each other. I know that the limit does exist and the limit's four. This isn't always true that uh, you're gonna get the same value. This is just one type of situation where you can get the left and right to be the same value. The more important thing to walk away and from this is to see how to use this table, right? Not to look at it graphically. Okay, let's try another problem. Well, we wouldn't be doing a good job if we didn't see another problem that had a limit as we're approaching a negative number. Okay, so for this problem, we could see that the focus number, the number that we're approaching is negative three, which I'm making that the highlight of the table and putting at the center of the table. All right, now what's difficult about this one is we're now dealing with a negative. Okay, so if you look at a number line and you see negative three, well, we know that there's some numbers that are around negative three, and people get these wrong all the time. Okay, so to the right, I have negative two, and I've got a negative four to the left. People get those switched. Now I wanna figure out what numbers are close to negative three. And again, I'm gonna go one-tenth. So over here, I'm going to have a negative 2.9. That would put us really close over here, right? And then on the other side, I want this number on the left side. 
and that number over there would be a negative 3.1. Okay, so I've got those two values. And of course, I want to get closer and closer. So we're going to play the same game we played before. So this is negative 2.99, negative 2.999. And then over here, we're going to have a negative 3.1. No. Let's try that again. <laughs> Not 3.1, 3.01. And then I have a negative 3.001. OK, so we've got our table. Now again, just like the last problem, we're supposed to figure out what are the corresponding domain values? No, we have the domain. We want to figure out what are the corresponding range values for these domain values. So I'm going to use the calculator. Now this time I'm going to use a different way to use the TI Inspire. I'm uh, just trying to show you the different functionality that you have available. Uh, and sometimes different functions apply depending on which calculator you're working on. Okay, so let's try another one. So I've taken the liberty of pulling up a graphing calculator. And what I'm going to do here is press menu, go to new document. Instead of graphing uh, the function, I'm going to go over now to the calculator application. And I'm going to use this particular mode to do the problem. Now, uh, if you were to type in the expression the square root of the quantity x plus 3 and you evaluate it's going to give you an error okay so that's an error because it doesn't recognize the x what I want to do now is go use my up arrow press enter and it'll bring it back down what I want to do is instead of putting in x I want to put my leftmost my smallest oops 3.1. I want to put in my smallest domain value. And it's giving me an error. Interesting. What was that error again? Hmm, you're going to see it again. Use your up arrow, press enter, go over here. Now I want to add a zero for the next domain value. Press enter. See, it's giving me an error because it's trying to take the square root of a negative number. That's leading to. Uh, number that's not real. So the calculator is trying to tell me that there's no real solution. And that's what I'm looking for. So this is important. It's telling me that the function is not defined on the left side. Now let's see, I'll try one last problem. Yep. Okay, so the left side is having an issue. All right, no big deal. We go on. I mean, the calculator is correct. It's just telling us that there's a problem. Now if we try to put in negative 3, I get zero. All right, so now I'm starting to get real solutions. Now I'm going to keep going. What's the next value? It's negative 2.999. Okay, and I go, gives me that value. I use my up arrow, press enter, chop off one of those nines, press enter, and I'm going to do this one more time. Press up, press enter, chop off a nine, and I get that value. So what I'm going to do now is take these values, these y values the calculator was telling me, I'm going to put those into the calculator. All right, as you can see that I've filled out the table down there, I've got my function g of x, all the appropriate range values have been thrown in. Now when you do this problem, anytime you're doing again this double-sided problem, you have to take the limit from the left side, that's what that little negative stands for, and you've got to take the limit from the right side of this function. We have to evaluate it both ways. So let's do the left side first. So now we're looking at the left side of the table. And as you move towards negative 3, moving right from negative 3.1, well anyway, you can see a pattern. Over here, it's all undefined. What's the pattern on the left side? It's all undefined. So that means if the function's not defined, the limit does not exist. DNE does not exist on the left side. Okay, now you're going to take a look at the right side. Now the right side, you could see that as you're moving from negative 2.9 and you're getting uh, smaller, so we're moving to the left towards negative 3, well, you can see what's happening with the corresponding y values. They're going down 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.0. I mean, you can see that they're headed towards zero. 
All right, so you can see this numerically. And again, when you're doing the double-sided limit, you are again going to compare these two values. And when I compare these two values, I see that they're different. When they're different, you say that the limit of the double-sided limit, that is, doesn't exist. That is, does not exist. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me. Make sure that you go to mathguide.com and check out our hundreds, hundreds of videos. Uh, we've got interactive quizzes and, of course, text-based lessons, too. Thank you. Have a great day. I like limits. Nah, that's silly.